Russia and the United States have been at odds with each other over the Kremlin's ongoing invasion of Ukraine since February 24, 2022. The US, along with several other countries, have imposed strict sanctions on Russia and its leaders, which have escalated tensions between the West and Russia. The long-term effect of these sanctions on diplomacy between Russia and the United States is to be determined. They do call into question one of the most successful diplomatic efforts between the two countries, the International Space Station, or ISS. The ISS is a cooperative effort by Europe, Canada, Russia, Japan, and the United States to maintain a space station in low orbit around Earth. Each country contributes their own research and expertise to maintain the ISS. So how do these geopolitical tensions between the US and Russia influence their cooperation on the ISS? To understand how impactful diplomatic efforts on the ISS have been, we have to go back to January 25, 1984, when then US President Ronald Reagan delivered his State of the Union address, calling on NASA to build a space station. I am directing NASA to develop a permanently manned space station and to do it within a decade. NASA will invite other countries to participate so we can strengthen peace, build prosperity, and expand freedom for all who share our goals. Since Reagan's State of the Union in 1984, the U.S. had formed a partnership with Canada, Japan, and Europe to create a framework for space diplomacy. Russia wasn't involved in the beginning, but in 1993, Russia faxed a letter to NASA asking to join the U.S. and its partners to build an international space station. The heads of the Russian program faxed a letter to the head of NASA that said, look at all the benefits of doing it together. And it was that faxed letter that went to the White House and led to this initiative. One reason the U.S. was okay with Russia joining was to alleviate the cost of the ISS. Another was more to keep Russia aligned with the U.S. post-Cold War. The idea of tying Russia, post-Cold War Russia, to the West, to the United States, to U.S. values, uh, to give support to uh, the democratic regime of Boris Yeltsin, uh, to keep Russian scientists and engineers working in Russia rather than going to North Korea or Iran or Iraq or hostile countries. Russia also needed the U.S. to keep their space program going. Uh, the post-Cold War Russia was in deep economic problems. And uh, I think the, the people in the program uh, recognized that they were unlikely to get the money from the Russian government needed to uh, do the things they wanted to do. In 1998, an agreement was signed that laid out the framework for cooperation among 15 countries on the design, development, operation, and utilization of the space station. This agreement is considered a successful diplomatic effort. However, Russia has continually tested that cooperation by using the ISS as a bargaining chip. In 2014, Russia threatened to not let U.S. astronauts travel on their Russian Soyuz rockets to the ISS unless the U.S. recognized its annexation of Crimea, a peninsula in the southern part of Ukraine who still considers it to be part of their country. Russia's space agency, Roscosmos, Chief Dmitry Rogozin tweeted in 2014 that the U.S. bring their astronauts to the International Space Station using a trampoline. At the time, Russian Soyuz rockets were the only way to get to the ISS. When Russia invaded Ukraine in February of this year, the West hit the Kremlin with severe sanctions. Russian state media released a video suggesting they would abandon U.S. astronaut Mark Vandehei on the ISS, while Rogozin also threatened to crash the space station into Earth. But he's known for bombastic tweets, uh, and I think uh, most of the people on both sides tend to discount him as having influence to do what he says he's going to do. Despite the threats, Vandehei came back to the U.S. aboard a Russian Soyuz capsule as planned, and Russia sent three more Russian cosmonauts to the ISS. The cosmonauts were seen wearing the colors of the Ukrainian flag, although it is not clear if they were trying to send a message of support for Ukraine. The cosmonauts said they needed to use yellow material they had accumulated. The U.S. no longer needs Russia to get their astronauts to the ISS because now they have SpaceX, 
who have been transporting NASA astronauts since 2020. And as for Rogan's threat to crash the space station. Can Russia drive the space station into the ocean? No. Um, I think um, a lot of people feel like Rogan could just say, okay, we're going to do it and then push a button and boom, it's gone. I mean, that would be something that they would not do and not be able to do just because, again, it is built as a pro as an interoperative machine that both sides need to coordinate on. And you have mission control on both sides, that sort of thing. Future cooperation between the countries on the ISS could be at risk over the current conflict. The agreement between the five space agencies will remain intact through 2024, and NASA wants to extend it through 2030. Roscosmos has not agreed to the extension. They are also saying that they will not continue cooperation with the West on the ISS unless the sanctions are lifted. It's worth noting that Russia's space program can't survive on its own since it has limited funding and will likely get smaller as they cut off contracts from foreign countries. But the U.S. isn't their only option as both countries look to explore deeper into space. So basically, Russia has cut off cooperation with the West except for um, the ISS and uh, by its behavior made itself kind of a pariah. Uh, to eliminate the possibility, I think, of it being a cooperative partner for Western countries. So the, the interesting question is what the China-Russia relationship will be. Will China accept Russia as a significant partner? And China has a stronger program than Russia. And Russia needs China more than China needs Russia. So uh, that's uh, the broad geopolitics of this.